So good morning battery lovers. Today I'm gonna be talking about testing and selling 18650s. Because if you're into battery repair you will have a lot of used battery cells. Uh, we repair over 1000 electric bikes, bicycle batteries every year. So we also get over 1000 used electric uh, bicycle batteries. So either way we could scrap them or we could try and reuse them. Scrapping them is not really an option in Sweden. It cost, I think the cost is $2 per every kilo lithium battery to have them, to, to make that someone else's problem. That's the legal way. And uh, if you're a private citizen, you can leave them at the recycling center, but it's very long to the recycling center and the recycling center do does not even know what lithium ion batteries is. They just tell you to put it in that pile with, with the car batteries. That's exactly what they tell you. They will not reuse them or recycle them. They will just store them indefinitely. For private citizens, it's free. For companies, it's two dollars or two euros per kilo. So an e-bike battery would cost like six dollars or six euro to get rid of for a company and as you can understand that would be kind of costly if we would have thousands of them the, the one thing we want to do is reuse the battery cells however we cannot really reuse the battery cells because we need new cells to offer long warranties and we also we need high capacity cells so we can't reuse them but there are a lot of people that want or need cheap lithium ion cells that does not care that they are used and does not care that they have slightly lower capacity. Most of these are working for some kind of off grid solution for their summer house or some kind of backup system or something like that where they need a lot of power. There are thousands, tens of thousands of these people in Sweden. Some can afford to buy like a Tesla Powerwall or something similar, but most of them don't have like 10,000 euros or something to buy something like that. They have to find cheap cells. And currently we are probably the only company in Sweden selling used cells, at least at higher, higher quantity and higher quality. I really like selling used cells. I don't even know if I make enough money for it to be worth the trouble. But I really like that these cells um, get a second life. Now, if I could scrap them for free, if there were no fees for scrapping used cells, I would probably still try and sell them or give them away for free to anyone who wanted them. But that has turned out to be actually well valuable for us and I think we make money from selling cells. It's really hard to track down exactly how many how hours I spend on testing cells, taking batteries apart and selling them. When we get a battery, there are usually three types of cells. Other the, uh, half of the time there's 18650s. Other part of the time, it could be LiPo cells or prismatic LiPo blocks. Here are LiPo 4 blocks and here are lithium ion blocks. We try and test all of these except actual LiPos because they're very dangerous and we don't test them. They, we scrap all of the LiPo cells together until we have about uh, 100 kilos and then we sell them as a group to more experienced do-it-yourselfers that uh, can handle working with LiPo cells because you can build really good batteries with used LiPo cells if you're good at it. And uh, then you don't need a spot welder because all of them have soldering tabs but we won't go into that. We don't make much money from that. We sell maybe 100 kilos of LiPo cells and we usually get 200 bucks or something. So someone gets those cells really cheap because there's a lot of work taking those batteries apart and testing them. Uh, but for the ones that are have a really tight wallet, that's, um, that's up to them to decide if they want to go that way. But anyway, we are going to be talking about 18650s because that has been the standard for electric bicycle batteries since 2014. That was the year, I think, where almost everyone in China switched to 18650s instead of LiPos because that was the year 
so many Chinese companies could produce low quality and low price 18650s. So it's 18650s you will have to worry about. We're almost never getting any other sizes. There are two sizes, 21700s. We never ever seen them in a battery pack, except for one, uh, one, one Dyson vacuum cleaner. And there are 26650s that are also quite uncommon, but we get them from time to time. We can test about uh, 15,000 cells yearly. We have 10 little Kalas, Li 500, running 24 seven. That, that makes it about 14,000, but we also do have some other chargers where we test stuff. We've set the limit before. I've only tested brand cells, you know, the five big brand. You can see them in um, the bookshelves over here, where we have books with Panasonic, Sony, Samsung, Sony, and LG. Those are the five big brand. Before that was the only thing we tested. But we've started to get more and more shiny cells, but we refuse to test anything that's under two amp hours as new because it's not just worth our time and we have so much to test. But we started testing um, shiny cells that have about 2.5 to 2.6 as new. And we make shiny mixes from two amp hours up to 2.7 amp hours and sell as 100 pieces each. Uh, but when it comes to Panasonic, Samsung and Sanyo, we go down to like 1.5 amp hours or something like that because we can still make money from that. So how much money do we make from selling cells? In general, you will get $1 or one euro per cell. And that has been quite uh, reliable during the years I've been selling cells. Many of the cells we sell are about two amp hours or slightly more. And we do not decide the price on this cell. We put all of them out on auction for free or for zero dollars and the, the users bids on the cells. So it's the users that decide the price and one euro or one dollar is what they think a used tested cell is worth. Of course, if the cells are like 1.5 or something like that, you will get maybe half a dollar. But after, if they are 2.5 to 3 amp hours, then you will get even more, maybe 1.5 to 2 dollars. And uh, that's actually really good. That makes me happy that people uh, appreciate what I do. And the reason I can make money out of this is I think that I do this regularly. Every Sunday I put out auctions. Every Sunday, all year around. Some weeks I don't really have the time, but since our auctions run for two weeks, there's always something at the Battery Doctor's auction page. We use the Swedish service Tradera, which is very similar to eBay. It's owned by eBay. They take about, uh, I think it's 10%. That, that, that's okay. But I think it's important if you're gonna be selling used 8650s at auction, you will probably not get much for them the first time you put them out. You will have to make sure to put out sales every week for a long time and you will get hundreds, maybe thousands of people checking your sell listings every week. When you get, it's when you get many people that you can get good money for your used sales. For about three or four years, maybe even five years, I've been having these labels printed. They're very cheap. They are like, you get 100 for two dollars or something they are really really cheap and I write the capacity I write the date and I write the test slot and I put them on the cells so I know exactly what capacity each cell have I've been doing that for five years and that is very very time consuming it's just a few seconds per cell but if you add that up to 15,000 cells every year I waste many hours just writing on this label so we found a better method to keep track of our cells. And instead of writing directly on the cells, when we test cells, we try to test cells that are identical in capacity, like if they're from the same battery pack, most of them will have the same capacity. Let's go with Panasonic 2.9. These are almost brand new PF cells, most of them over here. And instead, we might have some old ones. Yes, here we wrote the test labels. And this runs 06, so that's from the summer. 
and um, I actually had an employee do this every morning. It took like half an hour. I can do it in 10 minutes, but my employees take like half an hour. Uh, but instead, we put every cell in here that is between 2.9 and 2.999. And then we don't have to write those test labels. Then we cut the time down significantly. And I don't think any of the do-it-yourselfers will complain that it doesn't say exactly how many amp hours are on the cell, as long as they know the range. We try to have a range of 100, 100 milliamp hours, but in some cases, on the low capacity ones, we, we group them together. And if they want, they can retest all the cells to get the exact rating, but for most of them, they will yeah, yes, trust us and use them as is. We think that is a way better method. We can get the cells out faster. We save a lot of time not writing those labels. This has been a huge time save for us and probably increased our profits and on those cells, meaning we can test more cells. I will probably upgrade my testing station to 80 slots instead of 40. So we can test almost 30,000 cells every year because we're coming to that three or four thousand cells in queue to be tested here we have some ugly looking cells and uh, this one is from a water damaged battery pack and it looks really ugly up here but we keep it in the cell pile anyway because it's tested it still has new capacity it's slightly discarded but we also offer warranty to our customers if anything is wrong with any cell they will get all their money back for that particular cell but all of these are tested so they're not bad but when you're buying used cells you will they will be a little bit ugly looking they will have uh, marks and maybe writing on them and small spot welds and stuff like that yeah, there's maybe one more thing I want to show you. We're trying to group cells by 40 because many times there are 40 cells in a battery pack. That's also the standard in like 85% 85, 85 of all battery packs, there are 80 cells. So we try to find boxes that fit 80 cells. We have not found that, but we have found these where we add Eva foam. I will also try and 3D print an inner holder for these boxes so you can fit them. Um, 40 cells perfectly in here. We have 100 of these, but we will try and do a better inner thingy. And maybe then we'll do a video about those boxes and show you how to 3D print something. We tried 3D printing boxes, but this is like almost two kilo. So you have to have really thick walls and really good quality 3D printers. So I don't think that's, and it will cost like um, $5 to print a box like this and these boxes cost like less than one dollar so you will not be 3d printing boxes or stuff like this unless you really really have to that's it for this video i so thank you for watching